OK, so we're back. And in the previous video, we finished up setting up our character animation blueprint and the event graph. Uh, in this video, we're going to continue by setting up our character blueprint, uh, which is the in-game representation of our playable character. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's continue. We're inside the level editor uh, main interface here. And inside the content browser, uh, we're going to click on the character folder. And inside the character folder, we're going to right click in an empty space. And we're going to hop up to the Blueprint Class option. Let's go ahead and select that. It's going to give us a Pick Parent Class uh, dialog window here. And that causes me to take a second to talk about the difference between pawn and character. Now, if you're coming from an Unreal Engine 3 background, uh, you may be inclined to choose the pawn option. Uh, it even says so here. If you look at the tooltip next to it, it says a pawn is an actor that can be possessed and receive input from a controller, uh, which sounds exactly like what we want. However, if you hop down and look at the character option, it says a character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. So what it's saying is that a character is an extension of pawn. It has everything that pawn has, but it also includes the ability to walk around. That's the important thing. Uh, and it can do that through what is called the character movement component, uh, which only resides inside characters. And there's a whole bunch of other things that live inside the character movement component uh, that are only exclusively available to characters, not pawns. So that's a huge distinct distinction to make, uh, depending on what your pawns or characters you want them to do, uh, choosing one over the other. For our purposes, we want to have a character that can walk around and do those things. So we're going to select character. So go ahead and select character. And when you do so, it's going to create a brand new asset in the content browser, asking you to name it. Go ahead and name it the character uh, BP. And once you do so, go ahead and double click to open it up. Now that's going to open it up inside the Blueprint Editor, uh, which we have not uh, worked inside of yet. We've kind of touched Blueprints a little bit with our character animation Blueprint. Uh, but the Blueprint Editor itself uh, is an entirely different topic. I'm actually going to hop off screen really quickly if I can get to it. Let's see how quick I can get to it. Our documentation, bring it up. Here it comes. There it is. So when you go to docs, whoa, didn't mean to maximize it there on you. Uh, when you go to docs, unrealengine.com, along the toolbar on the very uh, far left here, there's a Blueprint Visual Scripting section. And this has a whole bunch of different stuff regarding Blueprints Visual Scripting, uh, a bunch of how-tos and user guides, uh, et cetera. Uh, we're not going to extensively cover Blueprints because there's a whole bunch of video tutorials on those already uh, if you'd like to learn more about Blueprints. But for our purposes, we'll walk through the parts that we need to get through together to build our character. So I just wanted to point it out where you can get your hands on some documentation. I'm going to drag that back off screen now. And for our quick crash course of Blueprints, uh, when we opened our Blueprint, we are currently on the Viewport tab. Uh, there's three tabs across the top here. There's the Viewport tab. There's the Construct construction script, uh, which we'll use a little bit later, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, and then there's the event graph, where we provide all the scripted functionality to control our character or our blueprint, whatever our blueprint is. In this case, it's a character. So on our viewpoint tab, uh, this allows us to see all the components that will make up this blueprint. So to add components, let's actually hop up to the upper left up here. Uh, and this is where we can begin adding the components to uh, create our character blueprint here. Now, by default, there's some that are inherited when we selected our parent class. And we'll run through those really quickly. First of all, we have the capsule component. Uh, and this is used for collision. It's the general collision of our character. Uh, so it prevents us from colliding with things, or it uh, allows us to collide with things inside our level. So it, it prevents us from walking through objects, etc. Below that, we have the arrow component. and it's this blue arrow here. It kind of indicates the direction that our character is facing. Uh, and below that, we have the uh, skeletal mesh component, which is where we can assign our skeletal mesh, which we'll do in a moment here. Uh, and that's our visual representation of our character in game. And then below that, we have our character movement component. Again, this is only available to characters. And if you look on the far right, uh, you can see inside the details panel, it should start to become apparent why we selected character, because all these settings in here, all these things uh, come by default with this character movement component. And all these settings include things like uh, the max step height and walk speed, which is really important, how fast we move in game, uh, the jump Z velocity, air control, a bunch of different settings uh, that we can change regarding movement 
uh, that come by default. So in essence, you can kind of think of character movement as a little mini brain that knows about all these things that our character could be doing uh, and that we can change. So uh, let's begin adding some uh, components and changing some of our components. Uh, I guess first of all, the first thing that we'll do is let's hop back up over to our components window. Let's select our skeletal mesh and let's assign our skeletal mesh. So inside the details panel uh, in the mesh, mesh section here under skeletal mesh, let's click the drop down and we only have the one skeletal mesh. So let's go ahead and assign it and it'll add it to our viewport. Now we can see it inside of our viewport here. Let's actually drag him down by grabbing this blue arrow here. Just left click and drag that down. Uh, I currently have grid snapping off, but you should be snapping, I think, by 10 degree increments. So go ahead and put it down to about minus 90, uh, like so. Uh, again, if you wanna turn grid snapping off, you can do so from the uh, options at the top up here. Mine was currently set to one for some reason. Uh, the default is 10. So now that we have our character in position, let's hit E on our keyboard here and go into rotation mode because we want to rotate him to face the arrow. So we're going to grab this blue uh, arc here and just drag that to the right like so, about 90 degrees so that he's facing uh, our arrow there. And we're using WASD while holding down the right mouse button to fly around in our viewport. It's just standard uh, viewport controls here. So uh, I hit W to go back to translation. Our character is inside the capsule for the most part. Uh, let's hop up back up to the details panel. Under the animation section, uh, we have created our animation blueprint. Uh, we can actually assign that for our skeletal mesh to use here. Uh, right now, the animation mode is currently set to use animation blueprint. But you can also use an animation, an individual animation asset if you'd like. But we're going to use our blueprint because it has uh, a bunch of stuff in there that we want to use for our character. So click the drop down below that. Currently none is assigned. And let's go ahead and assign our character Anim BP. And when we do so, our character will enter the uh, idle pose like so. Uh, so we are good. Our character is set up. And the next thing that we're going to do, uh, let's go up to, uh, let's go to our character movement really quickly. Let's make some quick changes in there. And let's go back over to the details panel. And again, like I mentioned, uh, there's a whole bunch of different settings in here. Uh, probably one that you'll want to play with a lot is the max walk speed. Like I said before, this is how fast your character moves in game. So it's currently set to 600, so he's moving really fast. Uh, if you wanted to set up uh, a system where your character can uh, walk and jog, uh, like we set up with our blend space, uh, you could set up some script to change this value uh, via Blueprint script to go from a uh, walk speed of, say, I don't know, like 175 or 180 to be our walk, and then when you hold like shift, uh, bump it back up to 600, and then we would start running. Uh, that's how you could do that there. We're not going to change this in, in setting up the components here because we're just getting started, uh, but we are going to change the jump Z velocity just for fun uh, to make our character jump up a little bit higher. It's currently set to 420. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to, uh, I don't know, say 600, I guess, so that we can jump higher in the air. And let's also change the air control for fun. It's currently set to really low. So we're going to change this to 0.2. Uh, so we have a little bit more control while we are in air. And there's some other settings, like I said, max swim, swim speed and so forth, fly speed. Uh, feel free to scroll through these and see the different options and change the ones that you would like uh, based on your character's needs. So continuing, uh, let's add, I guess the next thing that we can add is a camera because uh, most third-person games have a camera, third-person camera. So let's go ahead and add, add that. I guess before we do that, though, let's, let's click the Add Component button. And the first thing that we're going to add is what's called a spring arm. So search for spring, and you should get the option for spring arm. And what the spring arm is going to do is, if you play any third-person games where uh, you're controlling your character and you go into a tight space or into a room and the camera kind of pulls in uh, into the room with you so that it, it's not left behind. It kind of expands and contracts depending on where you are in your game. Uh, that's what the spring arm is going to do for us. It basically does the same thing. We'll attach a camera to this spring arm, uh, and then whenever we move in game, if we get into a corner, the camera will automatically adjust for us. So it's just a way of, ha uh, of handling the camera for us. So we're actually going to rename this. I'm going to select the spring arm and press F2 on it and call it the camera boom. So you have a, better, a little bit better idea of what it does. 
Okay, uh, with that, let's go to the details panel for our spring arm, and we want to check the use pawn control rotation so that we can independently re uh, control the camera with our mouse. So let's go ahead and check this option. And I think the rest of the settings we can leave uh, as is for now, I guess. Let's, inside of our viewport here, let's actually move this up a little bit. So I'm just grabbing this blue arrow, moving it up somewhere like that. So it's aimed at our back or back of us a little bit. Uh, about 50 is good. Let's uh, next add our camera. So we're going to go back to the components window and click the add component button. And let's search for camera. And now we can add our camera like so. And what we want to do is make sure that our camera is attached to our spring arm. So to do that, we're just going to left click and drag and drop it on top of our spring arm. And that will attach it. And the camera should pop back uh, like so. Uh, we may need to zero out our camera settings really quickly. So let's select our camera and in our transform uh, in the details panel over here, it's currently set to minus 50. Let's actually zero that out. And that will pop it uh, back up. OK, uh, I think there's one more setting that we need to change, and that's going to be inside the class defaults. So let's hop up to the toolbar up here, and let's select class defaults. Uh, there is an option inside the details panel for the pawn. Uh, it's called use controller rotation yaw. Uh, we actually want to uncheck this, and I'll explain why in a minute. Let's uncheck this really quickly. So we're going to uncheck this. And let's go back to our character movement one more time. And in the details panel, let's search for uh, rotation. So there's an option called use uh, controller uh, desired rotation here. And you can see it says it's overridden by orientate rotation to movement, which is the one that we actually want. It's actually this one, not this one. This is the one we want. Orientate rotation to movement. We want our character to automatically uh, rotate uh, based on our movement. So as we are moving around in game, rotate our character in the direction that we are moving. We want this one. We want to check this. And in the tooltip, you can see the last sentence says, uh, normally you will want to make sure that other settings are cleared, such as B, use controller rotation yaw on the character. That was that setting that we just cleared. So let's go ahead and check this so that we rotate our character uh, to our movement. And again, in our class defaults, this is that use controller rotation yaw that we just cleared because we want that unchecked. So with that, let's compile and save from the toolbar and save. And that's actually going to cause us to pause in this video. Uh, in the next video, we will begin setting up the input on our event graph for our keyboard and mouse controls. Uh, so we can start actually scripting the functionality for our character to move. Uh, so we'll do that in the next video, and we will pause here. Again, quickly recapping. Uh, in this video, we created our character blueprint. Uh, we've added some components to it, our camera, spring arm, and our camera. We made some adjustments to our character movement component, uh, allowing our character to jump a little bit higher and providing some air control. And we also assigned our skeletal mesh, obviously, and uh, made some adjustments uh, to there as well. So with that, uh, let's pause, and we will pick it up in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you then.